of the saphenous opening and its relation describe the attachment of the inguinal ligament discuss the clinical conditions associated with the inguinal ligament and the deep fascia now i told you this high that is the region between the hip and the leg and to approach the thigh the first we have to dissect the skin then we remove the superficial fascia this superficial fascia you can see in this slide this superficial fascia is a continuation of the fascia that comes from the inferior part of the anterior abdominal wall and this anterior abdominal wall actually superficial fascia of the anterior abdominal wall itself consists of two layers number one is the camphorous fascia and it is made up of fibro fatty tissue c a m p a r s camphorous fascia then the next layer of the anterior abdominal wall superficial fascia is the scarpas fascia s c a r p a s scarpas fascia so the superficial fascia of the anterior abdominal wall is the continuation in the thigh also only but only the one layer not the first layer camphorous fascia i'm repeating again the superficial fascia of the abdominal wall consists of two layers camphorous fascia and the scarpas fascia only the scarpas fascia of the lay or the scarpas layer of the superficial fascia is continuous in the thigh also and it is called simply the superficial fascia of the thigh that is the subcutaneous tissue and it contains cutaneous nerves important uh, veins great saphenous vein and the small saphenous vein the superficial veins cutaneous nerve these are present in this subcutaneous tissue which is the loose connective tissue the superficial fascia i am talking about the second layer that is the superficial fascia first is the skin then the superficial fascia and what is this superficial fascia superficial fascia of the thigh is the subcutaneous tissue a type of the loose connective tissue and it is a continuation of the scarpas fascia from the anterior abdominal wall inferior part of the anterior abdominal wall mein jo superficial fascia hai wohi niche ja ke continue karegi pure thigh ko cover karegi and it covers the whole thigh this scarpas fascia superficial fascia of the thigh obviously this thigh contains number of important muscles that have to perform different functions this is the scarpas fascia that is the layer of the superficial fascia of the abdominal wall the skin first the abdomen have the skin then the superficial fascia first layer that is the camphorous fascia which i told you then the scarpas fascia second layer of the superficial fascia this scarpas fascia will goes down and it covers the thigh also and it forms the superficial fascia of the thigh so we can simply say the second layer or the membranous layer of the superficial fascia or the scarpas fascia scarpas layer of the superficial fascia is a continuation also continues in the thigh also okay now this we have done the skin the superficial fascia that is simply the continuation of the scarpas fascia of the anterior abdominal wall then we go to the deep fascia now this deep fascia is um, very thick tough strong elastic extended bm and the deep fascia of the thigh is termed as fascia lata that is lata is a latin word and it is derived from latin word means broad what we call the deep fascia of the thigh the deep fascia of the thigh also called fascia lata first we have the skin then we have the superficial fascia the superficial fascia is simply the continuation of the scarpas fascia of the anterior abdominal wall what is this scarpas fascia this scarpas fascia is simply 
the superficial fascia of the anterior abdominal wall the second layer of the superficial fascia of the anterior abdominal wall getting my point then the deep fascia this deep fascia encloses the whole thigh the thigh consists of muscles that are grouped in three compartments what are these compartments anterior compartment posterior compartment of the thigh and the medial compartment of the thigh so we have the three compartments of thigh anterior posterior and the medial and these compartments they all are covered by the deep fascia of the thigh we can say the whole it uh, the deep fascia of the thigh acts like a stocking and it covers the whole thigh the whole thigh this deep fascia is simply called of the thigh another term for the deep fascia of the thigh is the fascia lata and superficial superiorly it is attached by multiple sources and obviously it has inferior attachment also this deep fascia divides the muscles of the compartment of the thigh into different compartments anterior compartment medial compartment and the posterior compartment so the function of the deep fascia is to divide the muscles of the thigh into, into compartments also now the regarding the deep fascia attachment that is the fascia lata this deep fascia of the thigh or the fascia lata is superiorly attached by multiple sources and inferiorly it merges with the fascia of the deep fascia of the leg now first we will uh, discuss regarding the attachment superiorly of the fascia lata and what is this fascia lata this fascia lata is simply the definition of the fascia lata is the deep fascia of the thigh is called the fascia lata now superiorly this fascia lata is attached you have to learn this superiorly which sources it is attached and inferiorly uh, Uh, where it blends and how uh, it exit out now superiorly it is attached to the inguinal ligament and what is the uh, attachment what is the location of the inguinal ligament it extends from the pubic tubercle anterior superior iliac spine to the pubic tubercle and here where the inguinal ligament is present uh, in uh, further slide we will discuss the location of the inguinal ligaments also in vinal ligament is present it extends from the anterior superior iliac spine to the pubic tubercle so the fascia lata superiorly uh, anterior part it is attached to the vinal ligament pubic arch pubic tubercle and the body of the pubis posteriorly this is attached to the sacrum coccyx and one ligament that is the sacrotuberous ligament laterally it is attached to the whole iliac crest and medially it is attached to the ischial pubic rami ischial fibrosity ischial pubic rami where the ischium and the pubic bone join together form joint rami ischial pubic rami and the ischial fibrosity now inferiorly the fascia lata deep fascia of the thigh blends with the deep fascia of the leg and it is attached to the exposed parts of the bone surrounding the knee the fascia of the leg and uh, next point is the deep fascia of the leg is here to the knee it is continuous with the deep fascia of the leg i am repeating again the attachment of the deep fascia of the thigh superiorly and inferiorly so that is very easy it blends with the deep fascia of the thigh superiorly may there are multiple sources for the attachment these are anterior posterior medial and lateral and it covers like a stocking it is very extensible strong very thick tough uh, superiorly it is attached to the inguinal ligament pubic arch pubic tubercle body of the pubis posteriorly it is attached to the sacrum and coccyx posterior abdominal wall the bones that are present and one tuberous ligament sacro tuberous ligament laterally it is attached to the ilium bone iliac crest whole iliac crest and medially it is attached to the fibrosity of the ischium the fibrosity of the ischium ischial pubic rami again 
I'm summarizing again. First, the thigh is a part or region that is present between the hip and the bone. Then we have for approaching the muscles. First, we have to remove the skin. Then the superficial fascia. Superficial fascia of the thigh is simply the continuation of the superficial fascia of the anterior abdominal wall. But only the second layer of the superficial fascia of the anterior abdominal wall, that is the scarfas fascia. Okay, the first layer is called the campus fascia. The, this it is continuation of the scarfas fascia. And this superficial fascia contains cutaneous nerves, vessels, and the most important great saphenous vein in the small saphenous vein. Great in the small saphenous vein. cutaneous nerve and the superficial veins the superficial fascia now moving on from superficial fascia to the deep fascia the, the whole thigh is covered by skin superficial fascia and the deep fascia this deep fascia is highly modified and it is called simply the fascia lata superiorly it is that to bony landmarks bony structures of the The hip bone and inferiorly it blends with the fascia of the leg. Now this fascia lata consists of this fascia lata laterally. The whole thigh is covered by the deep fascia that is simply called the fascia lata. But laterally, this fascia lata is thickened. Only the lateral side it is more thick, more strong. it is stronger on all the sides the strongest uh, fascia uh, anteriorly the stronger posteriorly the medially but on the lateral side it is very strong and this lateral side the deep fascia is called only on the lateral side that's why we call the deep fascia fascia lata the lateral side fascia deep fascia of the thigh is called iliotibial tract iliotibial tract what is this iliotibial tract i am repeating again this is the uh, muscles baat hai nahi but the deep fascia the whole thigh is covered by deep fascia theek hai this deep fascia superiorly anteriorly we talk it is attached to the uh, in, uh, posteriorly it is attached to the sacrum coccyx sacro tuberous ligament and till it is attached to the ligaments now laterally this fascia is thickened and how it is thickened there is additional strengthening by reinforcement by reinforcing additional fibers of two important muscles two important muscles will merge on the lateral side and these two important muscles they form an epineurotic sheet or band what are these two important muscles tensor fascia lata and the gluteus maximus okay we just wait iliotibial tract or we can also say uh, the part of the deep fascia that is present on the lateral side is simply called the iliotibial tract and it is much thicker as compared to the remaining part of the deep fascia that is called the fascia fascia lata this iliotibial tract itself is composed of two more muscles or two more muscles converge into this iliotibial tract what are these two muscles this tensor fascia lata which you have studied in your previous class there is a muscle of the gluteal region tensor fascia lata so some of fibers comes from tensor fascia lata and some fibers comes from this is the fascia lata okay the whole deep fascia of the thigh repeating again the whole thigh is covered by the fascia lata fascia lata is simply the deep fascia now we are talking about the iliotibial tract iliotibial tract that's why we are we, we said that there there are number of modifications in the deep fascia of the thigh on the lateral side the iliotibial tract thickened and why it is thickened because two additional fibers converge or add on in this or in the deep fascia of the lateral side 
and these fibers comes from two important muscles these are tensor fascia lata and the gluteus maximus muscle three fourth part third three fourth part of the gluteus maximus muscle yahan se these fibers will join and they together form an aponeurotic sheet and then they are inserted into the middle part of the iliotibial tract uh, so we can say the iliotibial tract splits superiorly to encloses two important muscles what are these two important muscles gluteus maximus tensor fascia lata and in some books hum is baat ko aise bhi keh sakte hain ki iliotibial tract split to where two important muscles or two important muscles additional fibers add on to provide strength to the lateral part of the fascia lata these two important muscles are tensor fascia lata and the gluteus maximus here you can see in this slide the tensor fascia lata the tensor fascia lata and the gluteus maximus these two or we can say the uh, iliotibial tract this whole is called the iliotibial tract and what is the iliotibial tract the deep fascia of the thigh fascia lata on its lateral side is simply called the iliotibial tract it is splits to enclose two important muscles tensor fascia lata and the gluteus maximus so talking about the origin of the iliotibial tract it starts from the iliac fibrosity iliac to the whole iliac crest and then it is inserted into the lateral condyle of the femur jerdy's tubercle this is also a slide showing the fibers of the tensor fascia lata tensor fascia lata the name indicates it tenses the fascia lata it helps in tensing the fascia lata and gluteus maximus you can see in this slide we have one model also uh, showing the same white band on the lateral side that is termed as iliotibial tract and it is simply the modification of the deep fascia fascia lata on the lateral side of the thigh now the jerdy's tubercle this it ends iliotibial tract by attachment on the jerdy's tubercle that is present on the lateral condyle anterior lateral anterior lateral surface of the lateral condyle of the femur jerdy's tubercle and where it is located it is located on the anterior lateral surface of the lateral condyle of the tibia lateral tibial condyle jerdy's tubercle it receives the insertion of the iliotibial tract pure iliac crest nikla दो मसल्स उसमें इंक्लोज हो गए ग्लूटियस मैग्जिमस एंड द टेंसर फेशियल लेटर एंड देन फाइनली दिस होल बैंड इज इंसर्टेड इनटू द जर्डीज ट्यूबरकल दैट इज प्रेजेंट ऑन द लैटरल कॉन्डाइल ऑफ द टिबिया नाउ बिफोर गोइंग टू द वन मोर मॉडिफिकेशन ऑफ द deep fascia any question up till now the superficial fascia uh, the deep fascia attachment the iliotibial tract yes alize maria anusha alina sohail hasan rahul any question jerdy's tubercle is simply a tubercle on the lateral condyle of the tibia iliotibial tract it receives the insertion of the iliotibial tract you can see in this slide the jerdy's tubercle iliotibial tract is inserted into this jerdy's tubercle now saphenous opening another term saphenous opening uh, this is also modification of the deep fascia this deep fascia this whole deep fascia is stalk like structure and it covers the important muscles that are grouped in three compartments anterior posterior and the medial compartment of the thigh so this deep fascia fascia lata helps 
the muscles uh, to divide into compartments the fascia plus the intermuscular septa the intermuscular septa is present in between these compartments and how this intermuscular septa arises this intermuscular septa arises from the deeper surface of the deep fascia first we have the skin superficial fascia deep fascia then the intermuscular septa arises to divide then finally we have a layer of the muscles of the thigh this intermuscular septa that arises from the deep fascia to divide the muscles of the thigh into compartments and then finally it is inserted into linea aspera of the femur a femur pe abhi aap gaye hain just uh, keep this in your mind the term linea aspera of the femur intermuscular septas of the thigh arises from start kahan se ho rahe hain from the deeper layer deep part of the just below the deep fascia it arises deep fascia se hi arise hoge intermuscular septas teen ho gaye three in number for the three compartments of the thigh and then they are inserted into the linea aspera of the femur femur is a long bone is made linear straight line jari hai they are insert these facial compartments made up of connective tissue then inserted into the linea aspera of the femur now talking about the saphenous opening there is a small opening very small minute tiny opening in this way this small opening that is present 3 to 4 cm inferior lateral to the pubic tubercle this is the pubic tubercle we have the whole hip bone uh, right or left and two hip bones they will join together to form the pelvis this pubic tubercle inferior lateral to the pubic tubercle pubic tubercle is just inferior to the pubic tubercle 3 to 4 cm there is a small tiny opening ovoid hiatus called the saphenous opening what we call the saphenous opening and inguinal ligament uh, location for the inguinal ligament it starts from the pubic tubercle and ends at the pubic symphysis so 3 to 4 cm and this saphenous opening 3 to 4 cm from the pubic symphysis and inferior to the inguinal ligament also 1 to 2 cm just inferior to the inguinal ligament Yeah, this whole is the inguinal ligament. Where is the location of the saphenous opening? Saphenous opening is just inferior to the inguinal ligament, and three to four centimeter. We can say we can also say inferior lateral to the inguinal ligament, and also inferior to the pubic symphysis. This is the pubic symphysis. Inguinal ligament extends from pubic tubercle to the pubic symphysis. so this is the saphenous opening that extends from the anterior inguinal ligament anterior superior iliac spine to the pubic tubercle and here we have the pubic cell this is we can know pubic symphysis or the pubic bone yahan yahi pe it is located the pubic tubercle the pubic symphysis is a cartilaginous part that will join the both pelvis right or left pelvis This is the anterior superior iliac spine, and tracing from there anterior superior iliac spine, this is this whole is the inguinal ligament. Okay, this is the inguinal ligament. Now, what structures passes from this saphenous opening? A small tiny opening that is present in the deep fascia of the thigh. It transmits great saphenous vein. number 1 it transmits great saphenous vein and the superficial lymph nodes great saphenous vein will drain into the small saphenous vein and superficial lymph nodes will finally drain into the deep lymph nodes of the thigh superficial lymph nodes two structures passes through this ovoid hiatus what are these great saphenous vein and the superficial lymph nodes superficial lymph nodes of the thigh they both passes through this saphenous opening and what is the location of saphenous opening simply below the inguinal ligament you can say below the pubic tubercle you can say or below the pubic symphysis or for precise 
location you can say 3 to 4 cm in superior lateral to the inguinal ligament and also in superior lateral to the pubic tubercle or the pubic symphysis. This is the saphenous opening. This is a saphenous opening and it transmits two important structures, lymph nodes, superficial lymph nodes of the thigh plus the great saphenous vein. This is a modification of the deep fascia of the thigh. Okay, getting my point? Saphenous opening. You can see in this slide this big, uh, sorry, this is small tiny hole, saphenous opening, and it from where the great saphenous vein passes. Saphenous opening. Now, the saphenous opening, this saphenous opening, two important terms related to this saphenous opening. These, what are these? The falciform margin of the saphenous opening. This saphenous opening, the tiny opening that is present inferior to the inguinal ligament, medially, it's a hole like structure, ovoid hiatus. Hiatus means a hole. Medially, the margin is not well defined. No margin, or we can say the margin is not well defined, but superiorly, inferiorly, and laterally, the margin is precentric in shape and it is well defined. A circle will be merely. And that is simply called the falciform margin of the saphenous opening. Superiorly, inferiorly, and lateral. Medially, the margin is not well defined. This is simply a term called falciform margin of the saphenous opening. Saphenous opening. Saphenous opening to conserve structures pass open. Great saphenous vein and the superficial lymph nodes of the thigh. Now, another term that is the preriform fascia related to this saphenous opening. This saphenous opening is covered by a regional localized regional wise another layer of the connective tissue that is present only in this part saphenous opening the whole this whole is covered by a localized connective tissue layer a very thin localized connective tissue layer that is sieved sieve means the small tiny holes a hole has saphenous opening Usko covered away, that is covered by connective tissue layer that is simply called the three brief form fascia and it contains holes. These holes are present for the uh, passage of the uh, lymphatic vessels. These seeds or holes are present for the passage of lymphatic vessels plus the great saphenous vein. Great saphenous vein, saphenous opening to have or in case you pass or the superficial one Again, I am repeating, there is saphenous tiny opening just inferior to the inguinal ligament and the pubic tubercle inferior laterally. This saphenous opening is for the passage of the great saphenous vein and the inguinal lymph nodes. This saphenous opening is covered by a very thin layer of the connective tissue that is termed as free brief form fascia and it is sealed, it contains holes, tiny holes for the passage of the great saphenous vein, then the great saphenous vein becomes superficial, becomes superficial of the thigh and for the lymph nodes also. That is simply called the free reform fascia. Okay. Now, clinical significance. Clinical significance, what is the clinical significance of the deep fascia of the thigh? The deep fascia, it helps the muscles to contract more efficiently by, uh, it, uh, it covers the whole thigh muscles like uh, a stocking and it pulls uh, veins to push the blood towards the heart. It helps the muscles to contract more uh, efficiently. Plus, uh, it provides strength to all the muscles that are present in the uh, three compartments of the thigh. 
one more important clinical significance regarding the deep fascia it is used in auto grafting during the uh, dermal fasciotomy and the uh, debridement the wound produces large scars and these are filled by the grafting auto grafting reconstructive surgery the fascia lata is most popularly used for the reconstructive surgery flap is taken for the reconstruction in uh, heart valve procedures uh, the urinary incontinence and the eyelid preparation so fascia lata nowadays become popular choice because this fascia lata receives uh, uh, blood vessels large number of blood vessels and it is highly vascularized this vascularization helps to um, uh, helps uh, for in quick healing and the regeneration it has got more regeneration power as compared to any artificial tissue which we take for any and uh, these different procedures reconstructive surgery inguinal canal inguinal ligament before inguinal ligament uh, attachment of the inguinal ligament uh, it is present in your objective anterior superior iliac spine to the pubic tubercle it extends from the anterior superior iliac spine to the pubic tubercle this inguinal ligament forms a base inferior wall we can say a base or the inferior wall this inguinal ligament forms the base inferior wall or floor of the inguinal canal inguinal canal is located over there and what is this inguinal canal ab inguinal canal kya hai inguinal canal is simply a passage in the anterior abdominal wall and it transmits its structures from pelvis to perineum and so its location of the inguinal canal is the in the anterior abdominal wall but why we are studying this because the inguinal ligament that is present in the pelvis in the thigh it, uh, that is present in the thigh it forms the inferior wall or the base or floor of the inguinal canal this inguinal ligament now inguinal canal kya hai it is a passage in the anterior abdominal wall for transmission of important structures it has uh, anterior wall posterior wall superior and the inferior wall inguinal canal so this inguinal ligament it forms a boundary or floor of the inguinal canal you can see in this slide it extends from the anterior superior iliac spine to the you get to bottom now any question up till now superficial fascia we have discussed the deep fascia modification of the deep fascia iliotibial tract and the saphenous opening three brief form fascia we have discussed uh, we talked about the falciform margin any confusion komal rubab sahil anushe deep fascia and superficial attachment of fascia lata is used in reconstructive surgery because it is highly vascularized as a fascia lata is simply the deep fascia of the thigh and the part lateral part of the deep fascia that is the iliotibial tract these fibers are most commonly nowadays used for the reconstructive surgery okay for yes any confusion fascia any confusion regarding the deep fascia saphenous opening tree brief form fascia first yes pre be form fascia we have the saphenous opening just inferior to the inguinal ligament okay this saphenous opening is for passage of two important structures great saphenous vein is the superficial inguinal lymph nodes but this saphenous 
a tiny hole is present it is covered by a loose connective tissue layer a connective tissue th very thin connective tissue layer ye ek hole hai it is simply covered by a layer thin connective tissue layer and in that connective tissue layer small minute holes are present from where the great saphenous vein jumps get out and it becomes a superficial great saphenous vein bhi or superficial inguinal lymph nodes bhi not the inguinal superficial lymph nodes of the thigh superiorly superior attachment superiorly okay attachment of the deep fascia superiorly it is attached by multiple sources and clearly the deep fascia blends with the fascia of the leg superiorly it is attached to the inguinal ligament pure inguinal ligament means that uh, pubic tubercle to the anterior superior leg spine pubic arch body of the pubis pubic tubercle posteriorly our plan kar le sacrum and coccyx posteriorly it is attached and medially it is attached to the ischial fibrosity if you have learned ischium ischium bone may present and the ischio pubic rami where the ischium and the pubic bone join so this is the important attachment of the fascia lata superiorly and inferiorly it bends with the deep fascia of the leg any more question related to this you all understand regarding the deep fascia its modification saphenous opening falciform margin girdles tubercle where it is located in the lateral condyle lateral tibial condyle is simply called the girdles tubercle and it receives the insertion of the iliotibial tract what is this iliotibial tract iliotibial tract is simply a modification of the deep fascia on the lateral side and it is simply called the iliotibial tract deep fascia of the thigh plus the intermuscular septas they send three intermuscular septas are present for the three compartments of the thigh these are anterior posterior and the medial compartment mukhya ha understand what i am saying the deep fascia the fascia lata helps to divide the muscles of the thigh into three compartment plus three more layers these are termed intermuscular septa that arises from the deep fascia and then it uh, inserts into the linea aspera of the femur and they form by this three three compartments intermuscular septa three intermuscular septa are present and three compartments are formed by this any more question please yes now yes any question please any more question related to today's topic intermuscular septa is inserted into the linea aspera linea aspera is a line when we this uh, when we will discuss inshallah femur in our last next class linea aspera is simply a line of the femur and these three intermuscular septa insert into this line yes anusha which next slide you want to repeat please kindly tell me which slide
fascia that uh, this iliotibial tract it receive insertion of two important muscles tensor fasciae lata and the gluteus maximus